Hi guys, welcome back to the do-it-yourself YouTube channel. In today's video I'll be showing you how to make off an SWA armoured cable with an armoured gland connector just like this and we'll be wiring that inside one of these outdoor junction boxes water features ponds garden lighting shed electrics all that type of thing these are perfect I'll stick a link to one of these in the description and I'll also put a link in there so you can grab yourself some armor glands now if you're undertaking this job guys please make sure you follow part P regulations and make sure you have a good knowledge of electrical components and circuits otherwise this one's probably best left to an electrician and if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button for me there's loads of content like this on the channel and plenty more to come as well and if the video helps you out make sure you smash that like button for me right let's go make a start so we don't need a huge amount of stuff for this job what we're going to need is a junior hacksaw a variety of screwdrivers and general electrical tools like wire strippers wire cutters adjustable spanner or you can use the specific size spanners if you prefer and a pair of grips so before we make a start here we need to make sure that we have the correct armoured gland. All of these gland packs come with one of these little graphs here and on there they show you which gland you should be using based on the amount of conductors at the top. So in this case three, an earth, a live and a neutral and these are 1.5 millimetre conductors. So that means if we go across we need a 20S. As always before you start any electrical work make sure that the circuit you are working on is safe and that there is no power to that circuit and make sure that the circuits you're working on have the correct ratings for whatever you're installing. Right so the first step we need to do is consider where we're going to be putting this SWA cable. If you're going to be putting it through the wall to a consumer unit or something of a similar nature what you're going to need to do is leave a lot more length on your cable. In this situation this cable will be pinned back to the wall and I'll be using this outdoor waterproof box as a junction box with a fused connection unit on the other side of the wall. So all we need to do is make sure we have enough length inside our box so I only really need to strip off around six inches of the armour. So just make a mark on your cable and then cut that cable off on that mark. So we now have the correct length of armoured cable that we need so we can move on to the next step. Right guys, now we have the rough length just mark out where you want to put your armoured gland. In this situation the gland is going to mount on the bottom of this box here. So I need to strip back a roughly six inches of the armoured outer sheath. What might be useful for you if this is your first time doing this is to grab a piece of coloured tape and run that tape around the armoured cable. And that will give us a nice straight line to work to around our armoured cable so that our cut is not all over the place and that it's an actual straight cut. You then need to support your cable across a flat level surface. Of course if you're doing this on a bench that's a little bit easier. Grab your junior hacksaw and slowly cut into the cable until you feel it and hear it hit the steel wires inside. And then all you want to do is run around that cable really slowly and cut into the metal cables just a small amount but you don't want to go too far and go cutting through the conductors inside because if we do that we'll have damaged our conductors and that will render this piece of cable useless. So be careful and run all the way around the outside and just remember that your aim is not to cut all the way through those wires it's just to score them and cut into them enough to snap them off under pressure. You need to do this all the way around that piece of wire so that the cables inside are scored all the way around. So once you're confident that you've scored all those armour wires inside the cable, grab a sharp knife, run along the outer sheath, and you can just remove that outer sheath there, and you'll see those pieces of steel wire that you've scored with your saw there. All you need to do is pick a few cables at a time, don't try and do them all at once, unwind them and work them away from the centre conductors and just move them back and forth and they will snap off like that. Do that all the way around the cable until you have no more of those steel wires remaining. Once you've done that you'll be left with your centre conductors inside this piece of inner sheath here. As you can see there, a very small amount steel wire not a lot at all and before you move to the next step of the process make sure you haven't gone too far with the saw and damaged any of the conductors inside the next step in the process is to remove another inch of this outer armor sheath here 
we don't want to cut the cables inside this time all we want to do is grab our knife and cut around an inch of that black outer sheath away from those cables and look to get a nice even line all the way around once you've cut all the way around the circumference of the cable again just remove the outer sheath run your knife down there and then just remove the outside sheath again you should be left with something just like that the next step in the process is to grab the shroud that will come in your armor gland kit to which I'll put a link in the description below. That shroud there is going to slide down over our cable and we need to do that first before we fit our gland. So make sure that when you cut this you cut the hole very very slightly, only a mil or two, smaller than the diameter of the cable. That way that will give you a nice snug fit and uh, won't let any water creep back up the cable. And then once you've decided on that grab your knife and just cut across the shroud there and if you've cut it to the right size with a little bit of persuasion you can slide that down and over your cable just like so and leave that somewhere down the cable we can come back to that later on right next up separate your armor cable gland there'll be a big nut portion at the end with a rubber insert which will actually go on the cable here and form a seal then there's the middle locking nut which has what we call the wedding ring inside and that traps the armor cable onto this conical portion of the gland here. So once you're familiar with those, just lay them to the side for now. The next piece to fit to the cable is that part with the rubber O-ring inside it. It needs to fit with the thread facing the end of the cable, like so. Place that down and over the cable, followed by the middle nut with the thread this time facing inside like so and then you want to slide your wedding ring down the cable too but before you do that make sure that you get the wedding ring the correct way around because it has a conical shape to it and it needs to fit in the correct manner slide it down over the cable before we put the rest of the gland body on leave these parts dangling down the bottom there for now and what we need to do is wind this inner sheath round inside our armoured cables there in the same direction that they're wound round. It just needs to separate those cables enough so that the conical portion of our gland can fit underneath those steel wires. You don't need to go mad and bend them right out but you just need to create a separation distance between the inner sheath and the steel wires. What you then need to do is get the rest of the gland body, slide it down with the conical portion fitting underneath those steel wires. It just needs to fit inside the armour so that those steel wired cables sit up and flush to the thread. You do not want them to sit over the thread because that will stop you from fitting the gland back together. So it should look something like that. You then slide the wedding ring up onto those steel cables and the middle nut up over the wedding ring. Start winding the middle nut on the thread by hand first of all and you'll feel that will actually now be somewhat locked on to that cable. Keep doing that by hand until you can go no further. Once you've gone as far as you can go by hand you can grab a couple of adjustable spanners or grips and just finish tightening that up until the middle nut is completely tight onto the main gland body. You don't need to over tighten these and that is now locked on. And just line up the flats just to make a neater job of it. The next stage is to bring the waterproof nut with a rubber seal up and then tighten that in the same way that you did with the mid nut. Once we've got that gland body tightened fully together, again just line up your flats. Once we've got that gland body completely installed and tightened up, what we need to do is just slide our sheath up and over the bottom of our gland and that will form a complete waterproof seal. And that is how you fit the armor cable earth gland to the armor cable. But we aren't finished there because I'm going to show you how to now fit this armor cable gland into your waterproof box here and I'll explain how to do that if you were using a metal box as well. We need to remove the final inner sheath to reveal the conductors inside. When you're doing this be careful not to damage the conductors inside. So 
So what we have now is our gland fitted to our SWA cable, as you can see there, and our shroud pulled up over the gland body. What we need to do now is to insert our SWA and gland up and into our enclosure. That is then where our banjo and lock nut part of the gland pack comes in. Normally that banjo would sit over the gland and then our lock nut would lock onto there and you'd have a small nut and bolt to attach your earth strap to. However, we're going to use a much simpler an easier method than this, which I'll show you now. We are going to be using an earth nut. You can usually pick these up at an electrical wholesaler, but I will put a link in the description below where you can grab yourself some. They're pretty cheap and they're a lot better than the banjo, so I would recommend you pick some of these up. Now what these do is they take place of the banjo by fitting over the gland. If you're fitting these to a metal enclosure, you can see they have some little teeth on there and that is better because with the usual banjo fittings that come with the gland you'll have to scrape off, if you're using a metal enclosure you'll need to scrape off some of the paint to make sure you get a good electrical connection whereas these bite into that paint and that ensures that your electrical connection is sufficient. On the other side we have a smooth surface that's the side we're going to be using because we're going to be putting this on a plastic enclosure. Okay guys so push you gland up into your enclosure, flat face of the earth nut facing down, put that over the cable and just hand tight spin that onto our gland. Now, once that's hand tight we need to consider where our grub screw is and if we have access to a hole for our earthing strap. So consider where those holes are, once you're happy just do about a quarter of a turn. If you over tighten them on a plastic enclosure you're likely to just crack it. Just tighten up that grub screw so that the nut can't come away from the gland. Next get hold of your earthing strap, put the little screw in, can be a little bit fiddly, and just do that up onto the earth nut as well. And finally just make sure you've pushed the sheath all the way up to the enclosure to provide a watertight seal. So that is job done, that is our SWA made off with an earth gland and an earth nut. All I need to do now is wire these up and hopefully you're just here to see how to fit the, uh, the earth gland to the SWA itself. So I'll quickly put in a small bit of b-roll so that you can see how to actually wire this up into the connector blocks just in case you want to see that as well. If you don't need to see that bit Hopefully this video has been of value and has helped you out and if it has smash the like button Make sure you subscribe because there's loads more content like this coming to the channel and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one